Welcome to heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. This video is the first in a three-part series that will cover heparin-induced thrombocytopenia pathophysiology, diagnosis, and management. In this video, we will focus on the basics of the underlying problems that lead to heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. To start, let's introduce some take-home points. Antiheparin PF4 antibodies activate platelets and the endothelium. Platelet consumption and clearing lead to thrombocytopenia. Platelet activation and endothelial damage promote thrombosis. The story of HIT begins with platelets. When platelets become activated, they secrete proteins from dense and alpha granules. Alpha granules secrete a protein known as platelet factor 4 or PF4. PF4 forms a tetramer that binds to and neutralizes proteoglycan molecules such as endogenous heparan sulfate. PF4 also recognizes and binds heparin. Heparin has a strong negative charge density. Thus, positively charged PF4 binds negatively charged heparin and neutralizes it, forming heparin-PF4 complexes on the platelet surface. These ultra-large complexes form most efficiently, most efficiently with unfractionated heparin and 10 times less efficiently with low molecular weight heparins. This phenomenon accounts for the greater incidence of HIT in patients receiving unfractionated heparin compared with low molecular weight heparin. A subset of patients recognize these heparin PF4 complexes as foreign and form anti heparin PF4 antibodies. These heparin dependent antibodies usually develop between 5 and 8 days after heparin exposure. These antibodies bind to the PF4 on the platelet surface forming antiheparin PF4 antibody complexes. Note that the fragment crystallizable or FC region of the antibody is a tail part of the antibody, which interacts with cell surface receptors. Platelets have FC receptors that recognize and capture the FC region of the bound antibody. Neighboring platelets also recognize and bind the FC region and become activated. Once activated, they secrete their alpha and dense granules and hence additional PF4. The release of additional PF4 creates more antigenic substrate for heparin antibodies, for HIT antibodies. IgG coated platelets are removed from circulation by macrophages and the remaining platelets get consumed in the formation of microthrombi. Both platelet clearance and microthrombi formation lead to clinical findings of thrombocytopenia. The antiheparin PF4 antibodies also find their way to the endothelium, where they bind to heparan sulfate on endothelial cell surfaces and cause endothelial cell activation or injury. This leads to increased tissue factor expression and thrombin generation. Antiheparin PF4 antibodies are also recognized by FC receptors on monocytes. Therefore, the antibodies bind to monocytes leading to monocyte activation. The end result of both endothelial and monocyte activation is thrombosis. Let's discuss the clinical manifestations of HIT. The most common manifestation is thrombocytopenia, which typically presents as absolute or relative thrombocytopenia. Absolute thrombocytopenia occurs when platelets are less than 150,000. This occurs in up to 90% of patients. 5% of patients will have relative thrombocytopenia, with at least 50% reduction in platelet counts, but still above 150,000. In HIT, mean nadir platelet counts is about 60,000. Platelet counts below 20,000 are rare. HIT typically occurs within 5 to 10 days after the initiation of heparin. Early onset of HIT within the first 24 hours of exposure may be seen if a, platelet if a patient was exposed to heparin in the previous one to three months and has circulating HIT antibodies. The second most common manifestation is thrombosis. Thrombosis is the presenting finding in up to 25% of patients. The primary manifestation of thrombosis is as venous thrombosis, which accounts for 20 to 50%, and arterial thrombosis, which accounts for 3 to 10%. Additionally, some patients will develop skin necrosis at the site of heparin injections. Patients may also develop warfarin-associated skin necrosis, thought due to acquired protein C deficiency. Some patients will develop limb gangrene. Rarely, patients may develop anaphylaxis. 
acute systemic anaphylactic reactions can be fatal. Finally, let's touch on an entity known as delayed onset HIT. This is a condition in which thrombocytopenia and or thrombosis occur days after heparin has been withdrawn. Patients may present with a thrombotic episode. If the HIT diagnosis is not recognized and, pla and patients are re-exposed to heparin, they have worse outcomes. Delayed onset HIT may occur due to high titer HIT antibodies that exhibit both heparin-dependent and independent platelet activation. Heparin-independent platelet activation may explain why complications occur in the absence of continued heparin exposure. In summary, we discussed the following points. Antiheparin PF4 antibodies activate platelets and the endothelium. Platelet consumption in microthrombi and clearing by macrophages lead to thrombocytopenia. Both platelet activation and endothelial damage promote thrombosis. This brings us to the end of part one of heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, where we discuss the basic pathophysiology and clinical findings.